Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around and check out some of my other upcycling tutorials. And if you like what you see, you can check the subscribe button below any of my videos to become a subscriber. Also, if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, be sure to check the bell icon as well. So today I have a quick and fun project to use some old watches to make some new earrings. For this project, I'm going to be using a hand drill with a 1 16th inch drill bit, so a really small bit. I've also used a nail, but the drill is just a little bit more gentle to work with. I've got a couple pairs of needle nose pliers, a center punch, a little piece of wood with about a 1 inch hole drilled in it. I'm going to be using some Mod Podge. Got a small paintbrush, a soft washcloth or sort of thicker cloth with a straight edged paring knife. For each set of earrings, you need four jump rings and two fish hooks or whatever your preferred earring hook is. And then of course you need a couple of watches with some watch faces that you want to use for the earrings. So there's a couple different ways to make these earrings. Certainly you can use your imagination and hook more than two faces together, make longer earrings, smaller earrings, but uh, there's two basic ways to do this. The first way is to make the earrings without the the hands on the clock and that is a simpler way to do this but I'm going to show you how to leave the hands on the face and then you leave the back mechanism on as well which gives the earrings a little bit more weight so you can I'm going to show you this version you can certainly do it without the watch hands and all you need to do to do that is just snap this back part off and the hands will kind of just fall off then if you don't want them on there. So the first thing you need to do is get the back off of the watch and most watches have a snap off back. There are a few that require some special tools to get the back off or some of them have screws in the back but most of them by and large are this just snap off version. So they make a special tool that you can buy to open the watches with. It basically is a paring knife with just a much shorter blade. So I just use a regular paring knife and a soft cloth to protect my hand. And then I, you just need to find the little notch. Hopefully you can see that, but most of them have notches on them. And all you need to do is just get the blade in that notch, gently hold the, the face together and twist the blade and the back will pop right off. So I'll do the other one here. Sometimes it takes a minute to find that notch. And sometimes there isn't a clear notch and you just have to work at it until you, there it is I think, until you get under the back plate and then you can pop it off. So sometimes it takes a little bit more work. There we go. But usually it's pretty easy just to pop the backs off. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just pull this plastic piece out and then I'm gonna grab the watch mechanism here and I, you end up just having to break the, the dial bar here
So it's, that just sort of snaps off. And you can set all this aside. Now I like to take the battery out as well just because it's a thing you don't want to fall out later. So I'm just going to pop out the battery and get rid of that safely. Now if I didn't want to leave the hands on, I could just pull this whole back mechanism off and the hands would fall off as well. But I think it's a little cuter to leave them on there. So I'm going to sort of place them where I want them. I'll take this next one. It's usually pretty easy to grab a hold of them and it feels a little bit scary to snap this winding pin, but I've never really had any harm come to the watch face when I did it. Now this one broke off in a slightly different place, but I'm not too worried about that. So again, I'm going to take the battery out. move my hands around so I can see all of them or you can set them for a specific time if you wanted to. And the next thing I'm going to do to protect the watch hands and the back, I'm going to put a coat, a thin coat of my Mod Podge on here. So I'll put a coat on the front, let that dry, and then I'll brush a quick coat on the back as well. Just want to make sure I'm getting plenty of glue right around that center part where the hands all meet. This also helps to hold the numbers and any of the decorative parts of the watch face on. Sometimes they tend to pop off. So I'll let those dry and then I'll be back to put a coat on the back. So I've got two watch faces that I've put the Mod Podge on both sides and it's dry now and I'm going to use my wooden block with the little one inch hole to, that's just big enough to fit the watch mechanism in. That helps the watch face lay flat. And then I'm going to take my center punch which is a tool that just sort of marks a hole without actually making the hole, but it just makes it easier for the hole to be drilled without the drill bit slipping because you want to be pretty precise as to where you put this hole. So for this particular watch face, I'm going to put the, I'm going to drill the hole right below the 12. So to use this center punch, you just place it where you want it and you push down until it makes a popping sound. And what it's done is just placed a tiny little dent in here which will make it much easier for me to use the drill to make this hole. This is a pretty big drill for this tiny little project. So I'm just going to carefully drill my hole and then you can clean it up a little bit with some sandpaper but you don't want to do too much because you've got the Mod Podge on there and you should end up with a fairly clean hole.
Once you have the holes drilled and cleaned up, you're ready for the final step, which is just to add the jump rings. And there's lots of different ways to do this probably, but I like to use two sets of needle nose pliers. And then I just want to make sure that I'm getting my earring hook on the correct way. So I want it to be like this so the earring will face forward. And just close off the ring again. And there you have it. Now it will swing around and the back will show. If you don't like that part, you can take it off. Um, and if you're working with really small watch faces, I don't know if you can leave the hands on or not because this mechanism will kind of get in the way. But it's fun to experiment and try it. I'm going to maybe give that a shot next. So I'm going to finish up this other earring here. There you have your watch face earrings. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this quick and fun tutorial. And if you have a few extra watch watches hanging around that don't work anymore, you can give this project a try. Please give today's video a thumbs up and be sure to check back soon and see what's happening in the lab.